council member, it's been 10 minutes. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, um, just waiting for the other council members to pop back on. There we go. Hey guys, okay. Um, so let me just make a, a quick opening comments and then we will go to the presenter. So um, to people watching today, we're gonna be discussing the library system and its vision to serve our city into the future. More importantly, what are their financial needs? And if those financial needs are met, how will library leadership in turn meet the needs of the people of the city? Libraries are more than just a depository for books. They should be centers for learning and job growth, centers for community engagement, safe spaces for children and families, places that help equalize the access to important information. So I am prepared to move forward with a full renewal of the expiring library millage, but the library too must do its part by providing us detailed information on how that money will be utilized. Because what we've seen from past actions is money just stored up and not utilized in a surplus fund. Millions of dollars that never benefited the people of this city. I plan on moving forward with a full renewal and I'm looking forward to working on that. But I do believe that it is essential that the leadership team put forward a strategic plan on the future of the library system in our city a plan accessible to the public on how their taxpayers will be spent. That being said, I do not wanna lose sight of funding for early childhood initiatives. Early childhood does not need to be part of or cut into this library millage renewal, but we should work through a potential separate new millage or other type of new revenue stream for early childhood initiatives as well. So I don't want to leave them out of the conversation, but I also don't want to lump early childhood into this millage because I believe the least complicated and cleanest approach for the library millage is just a straight up full renewal that is backed up with a publicly accessible plan for spending. So based on the time constraints, we actually do need to work pretty quickly to put this together and put it on the ballot for the fall of 2021. So to the leadership of the library who's with us today, I welcome you and look forward to working with you on a viable future for our library system to meet the needs of the people of this city. I'll introduce our presenters today. They include Fayla Meyer, the chair of the New Orleans Public Library, Vonda Rice, vice chair of the New Orleans Public Library, Gabriel Morley, executive director, city librarian, New Orleans Public Library, Michelle Thompson, fiscal officer, business manager, and I do see an additional board member, Andrea Neighbors, who is also um, with us today. So with that, I'll turn it over to um, Ms. Meyer, if you'd like to start us off and, and um, get us going and, and tell us what you've got in store for the libraries. Sure, I would also like to uh, just acknowledge that Bill Satoon is also on the call today. He's another one of our board members. Um, and I am going to turn this over to our executive director in a minute, um, but I do want to thank, first of all, this committee and council members for the opportunity to have this conversation. Um, certainly, after the uh, millage proposal failed, it was clear to us that, you know, the voters um, had spoken. And so, you know, we are assessing our options. I do need to say that prior to um, up until this point, we as a full board have not met. And so without that, um, we are prepared to present to you pretty much information that we have said all along, even when we were uh, pre-millage vote um, in terms of what the future of the library can look like um, in terms of the vision. We'll also talk a little bit about the spending um, in the past two years when the library has been at full um, operations with all branches, which is far different than preceding years. And so we'll also address um, in part the, uh, the fund reserve that you mentioned, Council Member Moreno. So I do, Moreno, I do want to um, right now introduce Gabriel Morley. Gabe, are you gonna be on camera? You're on mute right now. <laughs> all right, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the presentation and then open up for any questions we might have. Well, I, I think you, in your, your introduction, I'm 
Well, I'm not sure where that came from, but uh, in your introduction, you, you sort of both of you focused on, on where we are. Uh, at this point, we have engaged a, a strategic planning consultant. Uh, that process will get started with the board in January. We'll be outlining the parameters for that process, a timeline. Uh, we do understand there is a, some urgency here. If we want to get on the ballot in October, uh, we need to go ahead and complete that plan before the summer, start socializing that plan, get it out to the public, talk about it to, to community groups, let people see what they're actually voting on. Uh, I hope that, that the plan will be very... Uh, very versatile uh, in, in its approach to what we're trying to do. Uh, there are some, some critical literacies we need to address in the city that includes early childhood learning, uh, but also includes the, the almost 50% of adults who, who have some, some serious learning issues. Uh, we also need to, to address some technology issues in the community. Uh, one of the things I've heard over the last year a lot is that this is not a very tech savvy city. Uh, unfortunately, the world is becoming tech savvy. Uh, we cannot afford to be a, a non-tech savvy city. Uh, hopefully also one of the things we'll address in the strategic planning sessions are uh, about our involvement in workforce development. Uh, we need to do a lot more capturing our users and those very same people who are looking for jobs, who are looking for opportunities. In fact, today, uh, we're unveiling a, a new product we have that's called Entrepreneurial Mindset Training. And, and one of the things we looked at is there are a lot of people who have ideas, uh, myself included, but they don't think of themselves as entrepreneurs. So part of what this training does is help people understand what an entrepreneur is, how an entrepreneur operates. Uh, it's a self-guided uh, a series of, of courses people can take, but uh, we may end up also partnering with the, the city's workforce development group to offer this in, in some kind of face-to-face -face setting uh, once some of the, the COVID, uh, some of the COVID issues have, have relaxed or some of the, the restrictions have been relaxed. Uh, to talk a little bit more about the funding, I, I don't want to rehash everything. All of you know this. We've been over it over and over. In 2016 and, and 2017, uh, the library uh, incurred this giant surplus because the, the new millage that was approved in 2015, that revenue was incoming, but the new branches hadn't been uh, brought aboard yet. So we, we hadn't hired enough staff to have a full complement. We didn't have the branches up and running. Uh, if you look back, you'll see uh, in 2018 and 2019, uh, that funding leveled off and it was more in alignment with our spending. In fact, we spent more than, than 96, almost 97% of, of that funding. So it's good to hear that, that we have some support seeking a, a flat renewal of the, the 2.58 mils. Uh, that would be my recommendation to the board in January that we, we do ask for a straight renewal of that 2.58 mils. Uh, that gets us to a, a level where we're comfortable. We know we can maintain all of the, the branches we have and gives us that versatility that, that we're looking for in order to, to make some shifts, make some changes as we, we look ahead to the future. Uh, and, and, and one of the, the other things that, that Fela brought up is the, the fund balance. Uh, part of, of, of dealing with that fund balance is doing that in a responsible way, right? I, I, I totally understand that, that we shouldn't be sitting on this, this you know, giant surplus of money. We want to get that down to the two or three million dollar range, but it, it would also be irresponsible to just go out and spend that money just to spend it. So part of what we want to do is make sure that we're spending that money responsibly and, and that's probably not gonna happen until 2022, 23, 24 down the line. Uh, part of what's, what's floating our budget for 2021 is those, the, the tax funds we found. Uh, so we have over a million dollars in, in some old uh, donations that came into the city and we're trying to close those out uh, this year. So we, we will not be spending an inordinate amount of money out of the fund balance for 2021. Uh, but, but hopefully the strategic planning process will also address how we, we look at that fund balance and what kinds of, of opportunities we might be able to sustain long term 
uh, because that's a, another trap. We, we don't want to get into a, a, a situation where we've spent money on the fund balance, but then we can't maintain it after the fund balance is, is brought back down to a, a more um, acceptable level. Anything else you, you want me to mention, Fela? I mean, a lot of this is, is very premature. We haven't talked with the, the library board. We actually have four new library board members who, who probably you know, barely know where our branches are. I mean, they, they've just come on board literally. Uh, one of them hasn't even been to a meeting yet. Uh, and, and I suspect we'll have a, another new one named here uh, pretty quickly. So we, we have a, a, a pretty significant turnover on the board. Uh, Bill is a longtime member. Andrea has been a, a board member for a couple of years. They, they've got a, a good head start, uh, but some of these others will be learning on the job as, as we go. And so this will be a very fruitful process over the next couple of months as, as they get educated, as they bring some fresh ideas, and, and we look at how uh, we make this sustainable for the next 10 or 20 years. Gabe, okay, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so I'm with council member Moreno on this and, and I know it's going to be a little bit unusual for us because we'll be putting uh, a millage measure on the ballot at the same time as elections. Uh, so we want to make sure we really get this right. The two things from my perspective, just from listening is number one, are there going to be any obstacles to strategic planning, like hitting the ground, running, making sure we're doing it? Because the second part of that is... I think we have to do our notice of intent by March or April for October. So that means there really has to be a lot of engagement, stakeholder involvement. And so we're, really this is gonna be on a very short fuse and it not only requires the library board being engaged but also that outside engagement as well. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think part of that will will be decided when we have this initial kickoff meeting with the board, but the, the ex external engagement you're talking about with the community happened actually last summer. Uh, they hired another firm that came in before I got here. They collected the data. They went out, had all the public meetings, sent out the surveys. We have all of that data. We were prepared to move forward with that in February or March of this year. And then, you know, the pandemic just sort of interrupted everything. And, and so uh, some of that I, I'm hoping we can expedite and, and use that information to inform our process and make it a, a much more um, a much more quicker process to to your other point about getting to that notice of intent so we can start socializing to people what we're trying to do, why we're trying to do it, and what we hope to accomplish. Yeah, I, I just I just like everything, communication is is key. And I see everybody sort of shaking their head as we're doing this and 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 you know making sure that people know what's going on, that the board is working, that it's community related and and, uh, you know, obviously you've already pointed out the voters spoke about a month ago. And so now it's about having this ongoing dialogue and making sure we get it right as we as we move forward. And, and I guess March and April, then ultimately to October. Truly. So just so everyone's aware, um, to your point, Councilmember DeRusso, for the notice of intent, um, it's between February 8th to March 18th for the October 9th. Um, ballot, if it's pushed all the way to the last minute uh, to the November ballot, then it would be in, from June 6th to July 16th for the notice of intent. Um, so those are just some of the dates to work for, but I do believe that probably the October would be better, but it does mean that, that we're going to have to work quickly. Um, Mr. Morley, I do have a, a question um, because I do think uh, maybe things would have gone a little bit differently if there would have been a strategic plan that had been in place before the prior ballot measure. What has taken so long to get um, a strategic plan moving forward? Well, one of the things was the pandemic, for sure. I mean, I think they must have been, you know, engaged in this process in 2019 because they, they hired Trepwise to come in and, and gather all this information. And then I, I think maybe when Charles left, that may have disrupted it some more, you know. And then when we got here, you know, the, the pandemic came in, everything sort of stopped for several months. And then we, I, I think, 
uh, you know, back to to Councilman Giarusso's opinion, uh, this is not going to be as pretty as, as some of you may believe. I mean, the, the, the libraries are being disrupted. The, this is not a 1950s Beaver Cleaver post-war library where people wear a suit and tie and come to the library and sit down and spread out a book and read quietly. This is a very different kind of library. And, and this this strategic planning process hopefully moves this library into the future, not one or two or three years, but 10 or 20 years to, to where it ought to be. We need to shift our priorities from some of the things we've been doing toward things that are, are looking more toward the future. And, and some people are, are going to be disgruntled and not like that, but that, that's part of what happens with this kind of significant change. Uh, the, this library system cannot sustain the way it is for another 20 years. It will be left behind and become obsolete. We have to, to change with what's happening in our culture and our society in order to, to meet those consistent needs. And I, and I certainly agree with you on that. And I, and I yeah. believe that the last strategic plan was from three years ago and it only lasted a couple of years. Um, but I, so I do agree with you, Mr. Morley, that it needs to go beyond just a couple of years of strategic planning, but what does, you know, overall long-term um, library system look like going, you know, 10 years, even potentially even further, um, looking at other cities as to what's being, what's successful with, with other cities. But back to council member Jerusalem's um, point before the public engagement piece is going it has to be has to be big because how are you going to build a library system for the people of new orleans if you don't have a public process around getting their really robust input about what what they need and what they want and what they believe would be useful i also think it's really important to try to coordinate with other um city agencies and organizations, for example, is there a way for NORD and the library system to come together um, in many ways? I, I think that, that, that there are ways that you can cross meet um, needs. So what is what could that potentially look like as well? So, um, but, you know, I think the quicker that we get the strategic plan off the ground and get as much public input as possible. I know that you said that you, you started meetings well before COVID, but now COVID has changed a lot of things and changed a lot of ways in which people work and which um, people um, educate themselves. And so based on how that's really changed, not only New Orleans, but really our country and our world, how does the library evolve in that way too? So just some things to, um, to think about. Do any other... Uh, I, I, we, we kind of jumped into your, your presentation there, Fela. If you want to um, move on with your other presenters. And of course, council members, if you want to jump in, just let me know. Yeah, I, I do. I just want to um, thank y'all for, for being on, on this uh, meeting. And what is the actual timeline though, for the strategic plan? Like when, when are y'all starting? I know, and like you said, you've hired Tripwise. We knew that. But how much longer is it going to take? Okay. Well, that, that will be determined in, in January, I think, when we have our initial kickoff meeting with the board. I mean, we have to set some of those parameters. The, we have another consultant we've brought in now, uh, Michelle Thompson. Uh, she's worked with the city before. Uh, and, and so she has a, a good idea of where we are and, and where we're headed. Okay. Well, look, I just want to add my voice that I think it's, it's a smart move um, to, to try to go for, for the millage again. Actually, I do think the public spoke very loudly and clearly about what they believe and what they want out of the library system. I don't think it's going to be as painful as you think. I think as long as we engage the public in what they want, um, it's going to be successful. I think we've already seen it in the communities of what our libraries mean to us. And I think that is what was reflective at the vote. Councilmember Wynn is, is nodding, but I know we have very active branches that, um, that serve our community in many ways, just like you said, it's not like from the fifties, but we have, you know, we have summer lunches that are given out to our, our kids when they're not in school. You know, I know in any of these smaller branches, um, that that's where the kids can go to access computers and technology. And I think if anything, COVID has shown us even more the need for that and the need to make sure that everybody has access to technology. And that's what we've been saying from the beginning in terms of what that library can fill that void. So, um, you know, I know I'm looking forward to this on many levels, especially working with y'all and partnering with the plan. So thank you. And I just wanna thank the board for your work on this and even the new members. I know y'all are all volunteers in this and I know you've come in at a turbulent time, but it's really, really very important. And I know there's a lot of, um, public consternation when we talk about that y'all had a reserve, 
But can we also just be, be a little bit realistic too, is that we had, we had a, 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 we didn't have a director for how long was that? A year? Almost a year. Technically, yeah. And, he yeah, was, and he was ill the last year of his life. So, you know, it, it, it hasn't really been, I don't think the public has really been fully aware and I don't think this, the true story was told why there was such a reserve. And so I do think that all plays part in, you know, part into this whole picture. So again, I'm excited. And um, I know Andrea Neighbors is on the, is on the, is on the meeting and, and I know she's done a tremendous amount of work as well in terms of the strategic plan and, the, and planning that. So um, I don't know, Andrea, if you wanted to, to talk a little bit about the strategic plan, I'd like to hear it. Thank you, Kristen. Um, and I actually have a presentation that um, was kind of flashed up when Gabe started speaking. So I don't know if Sadie or someone can get I'll, that on the screen. I'll pull that up in one second. Thank you. Andrea. <laughs> What's that? Okay. Um, so, and I wanna thank, uh, Madam President Moreno and all the other council members for dedicating this meeting to the New Orleans Public Library. And, and thank you for the invitation to present about the strategic planning process. Um, so again, I'm Andrea Neighbors and I serve as secretary of the board and as the strategic planning committee chair. I'm just one board member. Um, so I speak as a board member, but not for the board. Um, and in July of 2020, I led a selection process with fellow board members for strategic planning consultant who we've mentioned, um, that's Michelle Thomas of Thomas Consulting Group. Um, our board chair, Phelan Meyer, indicated at the time that she had a commitment from the New Orleans Public Library Foundation to fund this contract. Um, unfortunately, five months later, the contract is not yet inked, um, although, we were informed last night via email that it has been finalized. So um, hopefully that will be forthcoming immediately. Um, and I believe that based on Ms. Thomas's scope of services that she proposed um, that this strategic planning process can be a three and a half month process um, and deliver a strategic plan for the library in that timeline. And um, further on in this presentation, I can, um, share a proposed timeline that could fit in that scope. Um, if the slide could switch, that would be awesome. Andrea, can I ask a question really quickly? Okay. Sorry, um, finalized, does that mean the document is written and it's ready to be executed or it means it, it's, it's a full go and it's been signed and, and, and it's inked? Um, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I think that we will be pretty far in the process of getting a final document um, based on this proposed timeline. Now, this is just a proposal, mind you. And as I said at the beginning, I'm just one trustee, um, but I see a path forward where we can be pretty far along with a document um, within three and a half months if that contract is signed and the board engages. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the only reason why I'm asking is because obviously you're here. I think we're all saying the same thing, which is we want the strategic planning process to start and start afoot. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, thank you. Um, so on this slide, I just thought that um, this group might want some background on the millage itself, on the history of the millages. Um, and so in um, 1986, voters passed the first millage providing four mills of funding for the New Orleans Public Library. Um, and at the time of Katrina, we had 13 branches open and an operating budget of 7.8 million. In 2008, that 1986 millage was rolled back to 3.14 mills um, while the city began rebuilding after Hurricane Katrina um, damaged nine uh, branches, I believe. Um, by 2000, and we used federal funding largely to do that rebuild. By 2012, all branches but one, which was Nora Navarra, was reopened. Um, by 2015, the library had opened five new regional branches and had 14 operating branches in all. And at that point, it was taking $3 million a year from our fund balance to cover our costs. So the voters overwhelmingly approved a second millage to cover those costs 
and also pay to expand hours by 30% across the city and expand programming and staffing as well. Um, and then in the years since, um, property taxes exceeded expectations as everyone knows. And um, in last year in 2019, the council rolled back our millages um, rates from 5.64 to 4.91 for 2020. So that reduced our revenues by, um, I would say about 3 million a year putting us back to about a 20 million annual funding level, um, which is what we expected back at the 2015 millage passes, passage. Um, and given that we spent um, about that um, last year, we spent about 19.5 million, um, it does seem like a renewal at current levels is appropriate for us to maintain our current services. So um, I really, thank and applaud council members who are um, advocating that um, renewal at current levels. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, that would be awesome. Um, this slide just shows a regional comparison of um, revenue uh, per capita um, compared to other libraries in major cities in the state. Um, and, um, it shows that New Orleans spends the least per person on its library of any major city in the state. And that's at our current funding levels. And this is um, sourced from the state library. Um, on the next slide, it shows the regional comparison of operating expenditures. And New Orleans public libraries operating expenditures are less than half of that of East Baton Rouge Parish. And we're on par with neighboring Jefferson Parish um, and so what that says to me is that while we're competitive with JP on operating expenses, we're not overfunded. Um, next slide, please. And so this um, shows um, our reserves and it's uh, 2018 numbers from the state library. Um, and it just compares our reserves to other major library systems in the state. Um, just to give you another comparison. Um, and then next slide. Um, slides, the next few slides, um, they're basically here just to show, give you guys a picture of the dramatic increase in library usage between 2017 and 2019 as our hours, our staffing and our programming um, that were all made available by the 2015 new millage. Um, and um, how we provided the public with more access and more resources. And you can see if we just go through these next slides, um, the increase in usage. So this is just the basic uh, checkouts. The next one is the checkouts for children. The next one shows the number of programs we started offering. And then the final in this series shows just attendance. And you can just see as the years go on, we really have an increase um, of usage through the years. Um, so that is that, um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so this um, is based on conversations that I've had over the past five months with um, the strategic planning consultant that we hired um, and are waiting to engage once our contract is finalized. Um, and I wanna to touch on um, what Gay was talking about. There was a community engagement process last year using TREPWISE um, and that is going to provide some great information to use going forward, but there was a feeling that um, it did not really capture all the interest groups in the city as well as we would like. Um, and so this new consultant is going to build upon those findings um, and try, and she's also engaging a phenomenal group of young teens of color who will be going out and really engaging and capturing interest with their peers and teens in the city and finding out what they want and what their families want and need from our library system. Um, that was one of several demographic groups that really were underrepresented when we did our community engagement last round and um so it's Andrea, very exciting Andrea, i that i'm so happy that you mentioned that because that's what i was concerned about it's like what about our youth what about you know what high school students need middle school students need you know um uh so that is key but i i also just want to just reiterate what i mentioned before 
and why I think it's so important that you all are going back and collecting additional data, things have changed because of COVID. Just the overall way that we interact with people, the overall way we work, we learn has now changed. Um, and so that now needs to be incorporated into the conversation as well. And so while I'm sure that you all collected great data um, a year ago, things are different. And the fact that you just told me that, that you all are incorporating, you know, getting, getting um, input from our youth is, is really key as well. So I appreciate that. Great. Um, and um, I think it was mentioned just the timeline of the strategic planning um, document that we're going to produce. And that was actually a conversation that we had during the interviewing process. And um, I think we need to go back and revisit it. Um, we were thinking that based on what you just said, Council Member Moreno, that because the landscape is changing so quickly right now with technology um, and looking at what the future of a library will be, that doing a longer term, five, 10 years might be obsolete when we get there. Um, and so we're really heavily weighing that. Um, it was a conversation we had and we'll have to go back to and, and rediscuss it when we meet as a board on this. So it, it's something to think about. Um, I think so, think about okay. But, but maybe there's a way that you can ensure that if, okay, so let's say that I get it, technology is changing fast, things are changing um, very quickly these days. Um, but I think what, what, what probably needs to be done is if you're going to do strategic plans, let's say every three years, that you for sure start the next one immediately, that there isn't any type of like three years ends and you immediately start the next one, that there never is this type of delay where you don't have a plan for the future. And so maybe that would be an approach to take if you can't do, I get it, that makes absolute, that makes sense. If you can't do a 10 year plan, well, then how do you make sure that you do a three year plan? And then a, a, another three-year plan is ready as soon as that three years is over and another three-year plan is ready so that you always are prepared and the public is always aware of how their tax dollars are being spent. And there is always this engagement with the public about what they want from their public library system. So that's what could be a, a potential workable option. Thank you. Those are fabulous ideas and definitely ones that we can um, try to incorporate it. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, and so community engagement, um, talking to teens, talking to parents, talking to job seekers, library staff, the library advocates. So really pulling in people and finding out where everyone is now, especially in these strange times we're living in. Um, the consultant is planning on doing an initial analysis and key findings report and then going back out, um, doing more stakeholder engagement with the board and doing goal setting and planning. Um, so we can go to the next slide. So this is a proposed timeline based on what this scope of services includes. Um, and as you can see, if we could get started um, right towards the beginning of January, we could have a final strategic plan submitted by April. And this is based on conversations I had earlier um, while with the consultant while waiting for her um, contract to be inked. Now, you know, once she actually gets rolling, um, we'll have to see what she says and what her schedule looks like. Um, but that seemed a while ago to be a reasonable timeline, um, this scope of three and a half months. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, so a key part, as we've all just talked about of the strategic planning process is community engagement. Um, and we need to listen carefully to what our community wants from their public library. Um, so in my four years as a trustee, I've tried to do that. And I've heard several themes raised repeatedly that I believe deserves serious consideration as we go through this process. Um, so I'll just quickly go through these themes. Um, the first one, how do we advance equity to make sure our, our library meets people where they are? Um, we have an internal equity task force that should serve as a guide for integrating equity into every strategic initiative put to paper. So we ensure communities like New Orleans East, Central City, Lower Ninth, all historically underserved get the resources they need and so that kids and teens and their families have a safe place to study, to learn, to dream, or just to be. Um, 
And then the next one, um, securing stable and sufficient resources, obviously that's a big reason of why we're here. Um, and um, again, I thank the council members who support reinstating our funding at its full level. Um, the third one, addressing um, digital opportunity and dig the digital divide. Um, and I think our director spoke about this, this earlier, um, but I wanna say that um, the, yes, the library's digital holdings have been a huge and welcome resource to many in the city during the pandemic and just in general. But I think it would be a huge mistake to think that a primarily digital system is the answer for New Orleans right now. Um, we had more than 2.3 million print materials checked out in 2019. That was a 41% increase over 2018 numbers. Um, but more importantly, there are, as we all know, many, many in the city that do not have internet access right now. They don't have the luxury of downloading our online resources. So increasing our digital access and digital literacy has got to go hand in hand with ramping up our digital offerings. We've got to do both at this juncture. Um, the next one is the New Orleans teens and other vulnerable populations. And we just spoke about that. Um, but I will say that in one of our community listening sessions, we had some teens who showed up and their point was that there is a huge lack of opportunities in this city for kids age 12 to 19. They talked about all the things for little kids and that the city is a playground for adults. But these teens have very little and they are really looking to the library to fill that gap. Um, and so hopefully this process with this phenomenal facilitator we have lined up will we'll get to the heart of that. Um, and then the next partnering for greater impact. Um, I've actually heard from many of you council members about um, the importance of partnering. Um, through our stakeholder and community surveys, New Orleans Public Library hopefully will be able to gauge the kinds of partnerships that our communities want. Um, in the past suggestions that um, we've heard on the board are partnering with Job One, as Councilmember Drew so suggested, um, to connect our workforce with 21st century jobs, partnering with NORD, as Councilmember uh, Moreno said to include reading and literacy in NORD summer camps and other NORD programs, and um, even partnering with munis municipal court to hold community court in branch locations so citizens don't have to travel downtown to handle their business. Um, then the archives, um, the city promised money for a study of our archives, which remain in a tenuous place on the bottom two floors of main library. And this is a serious con strategic consideration for New Orleans Public Library. Um, I think we've talked uh, about the fund balance in, in this conversation, um, and we've got to figure out how we can spend down that fund balance um, while promoting New Orleans Public Library's mission, vision, and values. Um, and the library culture, I think, has got to be addressed. Um, staff morale at the library needed attention before the pandemic. And then poor communication between staff and New Orleans Public Library leadership has exacerbated tensions. And then the last four months of uncertainty um, with the proposed millage that was on the ballot just made things worse. And so New Orleans Public Library has got to find a way to regain the trust of our greatest resource, which is the people that show up day in and out to serve the public. Um, the last item, it's been um, raised a couple of times that I've heard in different community listening sessions, um, and it's um, how we reach areas that have been underserved by our, our library system. Um, and there are some areas of the city with little to no proximity to our library resources, um, and we should seek to identify opportunities to connect these areas with our resources through pop-ups or mobile internet stations or some other creative solutions. Um, and I think our, our director is really well equipped in that area to, to come up with some stuff. I think it's one of his strong points. So um, next slide. That's all I've got. Um, and again, I thank all of you for your interest and support. 
Thank you, Ms. Neighbors. I appreciate that. Are there any questions um, from the dais for Ms. Neighbors or any of the other? I, have, I do have a quick question. You mentioned our city archives, that there, that, um, that there was some money attached to that to study um, where they are and how to move forward. Is that, where is that money? Is that still in place? Um, someone else might be able to speak to this better, um, but I, my understanding, it's a capital um, expense. It was like a uh, I, maybe a hundred thousand. I can't remember. Fela, can you answer that? I know there's money slated for a study um, for how to better safeguard this public resource that we're charged with caring for. So Gabe or Fela, do you do you have the details on that? Yeah, I, I can. Um, Ramsey and, and Vince worked with us to to use some of the money they have. Uh, so they've allotted $2 million to do a study as part of moving the, the archives over to Gallier Hall in the, the Treme area as part of the, the full move for City Hall. You mean to move to the municipal auditorium? Municipal auditorium, yeah, 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 yeah. A $2 million study just to look at moving them or to actually... Yeah, to, to see, yeah, to see what it would take. Oh, no, it... it I mean, it, it may be upwards of $20 million to actually move them. I mean, the, you know, floors have to be re-engineered. You have to consider compact shelving or more spaced out shelving. That would, you know, that would dictate what kind of floor space you would need. What kind of special air conditioning? Do you need a vault? Do you not need a vault? What kind of, you know, it, there are a lot of considerations. Uh, you know, we spent over $20 million in Atlanta trying to, to, build a, a place that was going to last for some time and protect all of the, the information we had. Uh, so, you know, this will, will go toward trying to outline what would be necessary, what it would take to get to that point, how much it would cost. Uh, all of those things, you know, are just up in the air at this point. Okay. So is that, has that study, I mean, has that money been allocated for the study? Where are we on it? As far as I know, it's been allocated. I mean, I think that that's part of a pot of money that, that Ramsey and Vince already had. All right, we'll, we'll follow up on that because that, that's a huge concern. We've been talking about this since Katrina. You know, it's been 15 years about our archives and nothing's been done. So um, I, know you, I know you've inherited this, but it, it's, it's a huge concern of where they are. I'm not, I'm not quite sure the public even understands that they're in a basement in New Orleans is never a good thing. Um, all right. Thank you. And, and also, um, within the strategic study, too, are you looking at any kind of potential for earned revenue? I would, I would really wonder if there isn't any for some of the archives that we have for reproductions or whatnot. Uh, I would not be in favor of that. Some others might be, but, you know, I, I'm in favor of the library being totally 100% completely free. No, 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 the library, no, 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 the library is 100% free. Don't get me wrong on that. I'm not, I'm not saying otherwise. I'm saying I do think, though, that there could be some potential for other things, um, not, not for our locals, not for the people that are paying into the system, but I do think that there could be some potential there, and we, we've often talked about that, and in fact, you know, when, when we were building these, um, these libraries too, they were talking about um, these regional libraries to having um, income producing aspects to them in terms of a coffee shop or whatnot. And, and are y'all really looking at that or have, has that been determined that it does not work? I don't think it works. Other people may think it works. I mean, they had several different opportunities in the, the Keller space that didn't work out. And so, I mean, part of the, the conversations we've had earlier is, is, is this really a, a revenue generating proposition or could this be a, a proposition where we help uh, entrepreneurs get jump starts on their business? You know, so they, there are some different alternatives. Uh, I, I think if, if y'all remember, we're almost finished building out the Enterprise Zone space at New Orleans East. Uh, we'll shortly move to Algiers after the, the first of the year and get those spaces built out. And so the, the original opportunity is for the city, you know, to offer some outreach services. But if we find that the, the, the interest is waning, then the spaces are built out and are ready for someone else or some other organization to try and get in there. And, and at that point, that would be the time to have the conversation about, you know, is this a, a monetary gain for us? Is this a partnership gain for us? You know, what, what works best for everybody involved? 
Excellent. Because, yeah, that, that's always been my concern is that, you know, that these these libraries were built a certain way. And a lot of those spaces have not been utilized to that fullest extent. For Andrew, sure. you're waving your hand. Was Yeah. And um, thanks, Gabe, for helping me out with that. Um, I would add that with those enterprise zones and spaces that um, that would, in my brain, tie into this conversation about partnering and, um, you know, the library needs to think hard about how we best utilize those spaces. And is it a partnership with a jobs program? Is it a partnership with community? What is it that, you know, with Nord, et cetera. Um, and I think it's a conversation we've got to have. Um, I know that some library advocates um, were concerned that city office building, uh, city offices would just come and occupy some of these zones. And, and I think we need to think carefully about how our partnerships, again, advance New Orleans public library mission, vision, and values. And everything we do, I believe, should have those three items integrated um, so that we can do the best good for the city. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, Mr. Morley, I just want to follow up real quick. Um, can we go back to the $2 million study on moving the archives just because I know nothing about what it would take to move archives. Let me just be very clear about that. But $2 million for a study, that just seems like a heck of a ton of money um, for a study uh, portion of it. So can you tell me kind of the scope of what the study would be? When are we putting that, when are you all putting that out for RFP? Like, what does that look like? Good question. I have no details. I mean, part of this was trying to allocate that money to ensure that the money was available. And then the, the next step is to figure out all of those specifics. We just went with an average of what we believed would be a, a, a cost for a study, which was a 10% of what we believe would be the total cost of the move based on some other information the, the, the library had put together maybe in 2008 or 10. Uh, where a consultant did come in and, and look at the archives and, and propose uh, some alternate um, solutions. For example, you know, building onto the main library over the existing parking lot and then moving the archives into there. Uh, you know, purchasing another facility and then renovating that facility to meet the needs. And so the, the, the cost average of those was around 20 million. So we took a 10% figure from that 20 million uh, to allocate for the, the study. And, and did you, have you talked to, I guess, other library systems around the country who said that the study like this costs a couple million dollars too? Was, or was there any type of research? Not that, not that I know of. I got the call from, from the city and, and we went with it. Yeah, I, I, I really- oh, Wait, wait, so you just said that that you were looking at this study, like that's how much it costs. And now you just said that the $2 million was something the city threw at you. Which one is it? Right, the, the city had a pot of money they needed to spend, right? They had some, some capital dollars they needed to allocate. And so we know that we want to try and move the archives. So in an effort to try and put together a plan to move the archives out of the basement, we need to have some kind of study done. So as the, the city considers moving to the municipal auditorium, we said, well, let's see what it would take to move the archives into the municipal auditorium, since the city is, is generally one of the, the most heavy users of those archives, which makes sense. I mean, it's a good alignment of our resources. Mm -hmm. So then we used a, a standard construction figure, or the, the city used a standard construction figure and says, let's just say it's 10% to do the study of what we believe it would cost to do the entirety of the project. Now that study may end up being 1.2 or it may be 700,000, but we used that estimate of 2 million to slot into that, that hole so that money would be there when we got ready to do the study. So now that you have a potential pot of money um, available, so when do you meet, move forward with, you know, understanding what the cost really could be for a study looking at RFPs, like what, what does that look like? Yeah, we haven't had that conversation yet. Okay. So that money's just sitting there from our capital budget. 
And yeah, I mean, Ramsey would be able to to better explain or Vince. I mean, they they're the ones who who have this pot of money and, and were trying to to find ways they could use it that were beneficial for the city and the library. So so will that pot of money then, Andrea, would that be part of the strategic plan? Would y'all be able to give guidelines in terms of what that's going to look like and what that RFP looks like? Because it's also sounding like it's specific to the study of the municipal auditorium site, or is it specific to what our actual archives are and where and what needs to happen to get them to someplace safe? Do you see what I'm saying? Those are two different things. Yeah, I can answer that question actually because they're two separate issues. So the archives will absolutely figure into the strategic planning process, but the decisions on the study and on the actual move are administrative decisions. And those would be board decisions as well. And so those would be addressed two, in two separate ways. Well, actually not. I mean, if, if you're saying it's gonna go into the municipal auditorium, if that decision hasn't been made yet, that's not necessarily, that, that decision can't be made in isolation. I, I wasn't saying it was gonna be made in isolation. I was saying okay. that the, the archives are a consideration in the strategic planning process, but the strategic planning process doesn't actually make the decision either. That's an administrative decision and those recommendations then would come and they would come as recommendations, but informed recommendations. And I think what Gabe is saying right now is we don't have that information. So I think the level of detail that you all are looking for, we will certainly be able to come back to you once we have floated RFPs for that, once we have gotten feedback and proposals from the experts on doing that, and then look at what a uh, plan, a vision for the move would actually look like. Right, but I guess what I'm saying is, the study, is it geared towards finding a, a place to move it or is it geared towards studying one place to move it into? Do you see what I'm saying? So like the RFP has to be crafted a certain way. Is it just crafted to say, this is what it's gonna to take to have this existing archive move to someplace else, not determining what that place looks like? Gabe can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that, you know, the, um, Municipal Auditorium is a consideration. It is a likely and possible location, but the study may reveal that that's not an ideal place, in which case we would have to identify an alternative place. Right, that makes sense, thank you. Yeah, and I would just um, recommend just the faster we can move on trying to figure out, and I just looked at the, the capital budget, it's $2.2 .2 million for this study. Um, so, the reason why I say that is because let's say it turns out to be a million dollars um, for this study or half a million dollars, 250,000, I have no idea. Um, well, that's additional money that's that would then be remaining in our capital budget that we could maybe reallocate for other improved type of um, capital improvements, I would say, for the library system. I just don't want to end up again in a situation where we've got a pot of money once again set aside for the libraries for something or not something, and it's just sitting there in a fund. So I would just say, if you've got money that's been allocated to you and it's 2.2 million for this potential study, move quickly on it so that you can determine how much that's really gonna cost and any additional savings um, from that 2.2 million, we can try to do some type of budget ordinance and reallocate those capital dollars to additional improvements for library buildings, whatever, whatever it could be. Um, so just, just a thought there, but I would, I would definitely, you know, not wait and, and be, um, tenacious about moving forward with, um, some type of additional information on what a study like this would actually cost. Any other comments from the dais or questions? Council, Council member. Yes. Thank you. I was having an internet uh, problem. Um, I just have, um, two things. So Gab, you, Gabriel, you mentioned about the Enterprise Center at the New Orleans East uh, Library. Is, so all the construction stuff are completely done? Is that what you're saying? Or do we have somebody committed in that space uh, moving forward? Yeah, it's almost done. They've been uh, sealing the floor again. They, they sealed it one time. They needed to redo that. Uh, the furniture, I think, was we, we finalized some of the furniture decisions last week. So the, the furniture ought to be uh, ordered here pretty soon. 
Uh, so I would say probably sometime late January, maybe mid January, if, if we really get lucky with the furniture, uh, they could could be ready. Uh, and the, the intent is for OBES to, to be in there several days a week offering those city outreach services. I mean, we, we've tried to design it in coordination with what their, their new space looks like there across the street uh, and, and really try to set it up so that it works for people who want to come in and work for a day or two and then, you know, take off and, and go back to their regular office. Got it. Thank you. And I just wanted to, to um, express my support in reference to community outreach. So when you guys are ready to go into the community, um, please let us know how we could help uh, to connect with uh, residents in District E, in the East, the Lower Nine, and even Venetian now. I know Venetian now is a minute away, but they should also have some sort of input as well. Thank you very much for you guys' leadership. I have one more question just really quickly. Um, I know that Sewage and Water Board is trying to get um, satellite offices open too. And as we talk about sort of like using libraries, as community center, I see Councilmember Wynn shaking her head, Sanchez Center, Rosa Keller is one for District B, and there's one in Algier. So um, I think D and A are still lacking sites and uh, really would love if the libraries were willing and had the space to do it, to be open. As we talk about, Andrew, you talk, you know, about childhood education, engaging people across the spectrum, um, jobs, but also, uh, uh, you know, uh, making sure that libraries are accessible for other city services would be great too. Thank you. Council Member Banks, you just popped up. Did you want to say something? Yes, um, good morning. Uh, I wanted to talk to and address both Fela and Gabe and say to both of you uh, and to all the other library uh, advocates that I am looking forward to working with you. The libraries are of the utmost importance, but I want no one to lose sight that the libraries are just one of the issues that are of utmost importance. And while I fully agree that the libraries are critical, this city is faced with multiple critical needs, early child education, affordable housing, economic development. We have a multitude of needs and a very limited amount of dollars. So while I am committed to doing what I can, I think we have to be very, very, very honest with the public that we have a needle to thread. And while I don't want anybody to walk away feeling like uh, I'm adversarial to libraries, I'm not. What I am is realistic that we've got to make these dollars fit as best as we can make them fit because we've got many, many needs. Now, to those folks that feel that the libraries are the only issue that we need to face, well, I, I can see that you have a right to feel that way. But as an elected official, it is my responsibility to address the needs of all of our citizens. And while some may feel that the library is the only issue, there are others that feel that their specific issue is the only issue. None of us who sit up here can have that opinion. We've got to make all these issues important and make sure that we address them as best we can with the resources that we have. So with that, uh, both Fela and Gabe, I wanna work with you. I wanna figure out a way how we can make all of these pieces fit and I stand committed to doing whatever I can to make it as best as we can make it. So I just wanted that to be on the record. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Council Member Banks. Any other members have any comments? Okay, seeing nothing else, so we will take it over to public comment. Um, Sadie, if you could switch spots with me here. And Sadie uh, will do the public comment for us. Good morning, everyone. Unless I say otherwise, all public comments, no one is a paid representative. Um, first up, Haley Hampton. The citizens of New Orleans made their stance very clear on the importance of our libraries by striking down Prop 2. Show us that our needs and wants matter by continuing to fund the New Orleans Public Library and not letting the millage expire without a new measure in place. Emily C. City Council needs to fund ECE and the libraries, not gut the libraries for a slush fund and minimal funding for ECE. Bruce Boards. In a city with so many poor, the city should dedicate much more to the library. Those unable to afford a computer desperately need access to the library computers. 
In today's world, so much needs to be prepared and sent on com a computer, job applications, applying for schools, etc. Where would those without a computer access do the important business in today's world? Frank Wagner, I'm certainly for Prop 2 to be brought up again for a vote as early in 2021 as feasible, but please word it as a dedicated millage, not to be used for anything but the library system. Thanks so much. Murray Pitts, our libraries are a vital and essential part of our community. They are places for education, entertainment, community gatherings, internet access, and much, much more. Our libraries are the most democratic institutions our city has. No one is turned away. I personally owe so much to the many free resources our libraries offer. Since childhood, I've benefited from many wonderful books, movies, and activities. Now, in my seventh decade, I continue to use and enjoy the New Orleans Public Library. It is truly a resource for everyone, without which we would be a much poorer city. Please fully fund the library system for all citizens of New Orleans. Bob Morell, Dr. Morley needs to resign. The public library is not something to run like Uber and Lyft that has a bottom line and zero budget. It's a public service staffed with some of the best libraries in the region. He should be thanking his stars that the library is able to do so much with the current millage rate. Instead, he spreads misinformation using official channels with, with ethically questionable email blasts to promote ballot measures. He was quoted saying the library could not operate at 40% budget, then went on to support the millage proposal that would cut the library budget by that amount. Please introduce a proper renewal millage with the same verbiage as the expiring millage and the current millage rate. Catherine Jones, MD. I am proud to be among the majority of New Orleans voters who resoundingly enthusiastically support our libraries. Prop 2, which was defeated in our recent election, would have eradicated a voter-supported millage that ensured sustainable funding for our libraries, sifting, shifting some of that money to a corporate-backed economic development slush fund, only about 20% of which would have gone to early childhood education. However, the amendment was framed as being a pro-early childhood education amendment, grossly misleading voters, and pitting education and libraries against each other. Sustained voter education made true purpose of the amendment clear to the majority of voters who decided to reject it. Even the gambit, who had initially supported the amendment when they believed the misleading rhetoric surrounding it, issued a rare apology when they realized what the amendment's true purpose was. Voters to gut a popular service and undo the will of your constituents is not only dishonest, it's deeply undemocratic. Library supporters should have a seat at the table when it comes to drafting a new library millage, not only because your constituents consistently and enthusiastically support library funding, but because having an engaged citizenry is the bedrock of democracy. If we have learned anything in 2020, it is that democracy is actually much more fragile than we assume, and it is all our jobs to protect it consistently. We are living in unprecedented times where an informed populace is realizing its power to shape the world we believe we deserve to live in. Imagine what a powerhouse the city of New Orleans could be if our city leaders showed faith in the genius of the people who live here, rather than cynically trying to manipulate us. Hold on one sec. Um, pardon me. Uh, if the city really doesn't need to move funding from one area to another, perhaps diverting some money from our already bloated police budget could do the trick. At the very least, voters and library supporters need to have a seat at the table. We, the voters of New Orleans, expect more of our leaders. Jennifer Kittner, as evidenced by the resounding defeat of December 5 millages, the public wants and needs its library staffed and opened at full capacity. The campaign for millage was misleading and if we are going to fight inequity in the city, then we need to the library budgeted not at 40% loss for 20 years. We do not need another economic slush fund. We need libraries and the services they provide from summer reading to eBooks to virtual storytelling to computer usage. Make sure the library millage has a date on the October 2021 election. Elizabeth Kelly. The people of Orleans Parish have made themselves loud and clear. We want the library to retain its current level of funding. We did not vote for the millage only to see the budget reduced within a few years. The NOPL 
benefits everyone and any reduction will be devastating. Colette Tippy. In December, New Orleans voters rejected Proposition 2, sending a strong message that we support our libraries. As you consider upcoming municipal elections, remember that we will continue to stand with our libraries and remember those who did not. I urge you to put a renewal of the library's current millage on the ballot before the end of 2021. The library's millage should be dedicated to the library. It should not include other funding priorities. I hope that you will listen to the will of the voters on this matter and reject any plans that tie library funding to other funding streams. Thank you for your careful consideration. Jacob Germain, please, for goodness sake, just leave the library alone. After this hellish year, let us all have some peace and you can come back and try and rob this place in 2022 instead. Robert Rivard, I can only ask the mayor and council to do what they promised to do when they ran for office. Maintain the library millage at its present level. If immediate circumstances due to COVID-19 require a short-term adjustment, and if the library has reserved funds to meet their present needs, I can understand there might need to be a short-term fix. Playing games with the library's revenue stream for the next 20 years to move library funds to other uses is not a short-term fix. Keep the library's millage for the library alone. Barbara E. Ewell. We need a clean millage proposal for our libraries. The one place left for free access to information and the literature and education for everyone. Thank you. Courtney Kearney. Thank you to the council for hosting a meeting dedicated solely to our public library funding. As a library user and advocate, I'd like to encourage a straight renewal of the expiring millage. After 900 plus public comments were submitted this past August in opposition to the Proposition 2 and an overwhelming shutdown of the proposition on December 5th, I hope you recognize the voters do not want the funding for our library to change. In addition, why is no one from Save Our Libraries Coalition speaking today? Every presenter on today's agenda either publicly supported defunding a library, used their position to block discussion of defunding the library at public NOPL board meetings, or is here by requirement of their boss. After the misinformation pushed by Prop 2 supporters, including the director of the NOPL, Gabe Morley, why are they the only sources for library funding discussions at today's meeting? Please remember what the voters have been saying since 2015. They want fully funded libraries and they do not want that to change. If anything, we want more hours, more services, and a larger collection to access and use. We love our library and library workers and we will not stop fighting for them. Emily Ratner. I am writing to ask that this body take up library related business in a transparent manner with ample notice to the community that has demonstrated strong support for our city's library system. The mayor and library's leadership spread damaging myths truths in order to promote a plan that would gut the funding of our libraries. The people of New Orleans worked hard to shine a light on that deceit and voters sent a clear message that they want to see careful stewardship of our library system. When it comes to honoring the clear will of the people on this issue, it does not seem that this body is off to a good start. Y'all are conducting this meeting three days before Christmas with very little notice on the subject of the meeting, despite obvious interest among your constituency. It's astonishing that this body would rush a meeting of such demonstrated importance to its own electors, even in the wake of the message it received last election. This disregard is boggling. I er, I'm writing to urge you to place a renewal of the library's current millage on the ballot before the end of 2021, a dedicated millage free of ties to unspecified initiatives or private corporate handouts. The people of New Orleans made our voices heard by rejecting Prop 2. We said we wanted to continue to invest in our libraries and won't stand for any reductions in services or further furloughs. When the time comes to draft language for a library renewal, remember that New Orleans loves and protects its libraries. The message from voters is clear. The body disregards the people in the process at its own peril. Tom Andes. If the December 5th runoff election should make anything clear, it is that the public library system in this city is loved and valued by voters from every demographic across the political spectrum. Despite a well-funded, intentionally misleading campaign to gut the library's budget, a campaign that cynically pitted library funding against early education and eventually resorted to telling outright lies, voters in New Orleans resoundingly rejected a proposition that attempted to cut the library's funding nearly in half. Now the New Orleans City Council has the opportunity to do the right thing and renew the full dedicated library millage in 2021. 
The library provides an essential service and its workers are frontline workers. Again and again, the people of New Orleans have overwhelmingly voted for the library to be fully funded with a dedicated millage. Yes, we are living in unprecedented times and it's fair to ask everyone to make sacrifices because of the fallout from the pandemic. Yet the New Orleans City Council is considering giving Folgers a $25 million property tax exemption. The money the city needs can come from better places than the public library, which has spent 97% or more of its budget from the last two years and is already underfunded compared to other systems in major cities in the state. I hope you will do the right thing and give voters a chance to approve the full dedicated library millage at the end of 2021. Dixon Stetler, I urge city council to not let the library millage expire. Voters want the library funded as overwhelmingly evidenced every single time the issue appears on the ballot. Please listen to the people who voted for you. Come up with a new proposal that doesn't decimate the library. Rick Dusenberry. As we look ahead to the future library funding, it is important to reflect on the election efforts to slash its budget. Ms. Moreno, Mr. Jeruso, Ms. Palmer, Mr. Banks, and Ms. Wynn we're all on record as supporting this disastrous proposal. The proposal was based on misrepresentations and mistruths. Your stench of your support of the proposal will continue to follow throughout your time in this council. Do better. Linda Perone. The New Orleans Public Library is very important to me as I am a senior citizen with limited resources. I get all my books from the New Orleans Public Library and it is critical that it stay well supported by our city as it is key to many communities. I am surprised that cutting funds to such an educational resource is even considered as a positive option to our city's growth. Cheryl Pochapet, pardon if I mispronounce that. As a New Orleans library user, it's important for the city to fully fund our libraries. Our libraries and librarians support our citizens in so many ways and need the revenue to continue to do that. I was very disappointed in the lies and other misinformation put out by the Yes on Prop 2 supporters in the last election. I find it hard to believe they had the library or the city's best interests at heart. I encourage more transparency in setting up tax structures that fully support the library when the time comes for 2021. The city's resources will be watching this closely. Residents, rather. Nancy Zhang. The New Orleans Public Library is vital for the city. The reasons are plenty, but specifically, I'd like to speak to the importance of computer and internet resources at your branches. To some, computers and the internet are a lifeline to learn about opportunities for housing, jobs, and even sustenance. This is a city where the income gap is vast and drastic. Many people do not have internet in their homes. Your staff has an incredible generosity of spirit to help folks for whom functional illiteracy is a reality as well as a lack of access. I am a product of the public library. Just to name one example, I grew up spending summers studying for classes and the AP SAT exams using checked out pre prep books, which we couldn't afford at the local bookstore. The library system affords us worlds of opportunity in a safe space. I hope you continue to afford these opportunities to members of our communities. Patrick Armstrong, good morning. I am a worker, a homeowner, and a property taxpayer in New Orleans. I strongly support a fully funded New Orleans public library and would like to see a clearer defined millage on the ballot in 2021 in order to make that a reality. New Orleans needs robustly funded public libraries open for longer hours and well-staffed to continue serving as the community centers they are. The city needs to support library workers as professionals and make investments through raises for current staff new hires, training, and benefits that recognize the importance of the critical services these workers provide the public. What I will not support is more bad faith and deeply cynical politics I saw in December, fifth round of failed millage items. Y'all must not respect New Orleans voters very much if you think you can use overwhelming support for public libraries to sneak in a budget cut and use the extra property tax dollars to set up some unaccountable economic development fund that would never pass on its own merits. I am disappointed how city leaders tried to sell us a fantasy that deep library budget cuts would not affect city, ser city services. I am astonished at the thousands of dollars political action committees spent to mislead us about these initiatives. But voters knew better and spoke clearly at the polls when those ballot items failed. Now is the time to move on and get it right. 
give the voters a clear, defined, independent millage in 2021 that will fully invest in the budget for the New Orleans Public Library and watch the item pass overwhelmingly. Thank you for your consideration. Lady Walker. Our libraries are an integral resource in education and cultural enrichment. Cutting funding and limiting the, li the public's access to public libraries would be detrimental to the people who live in this city. Please continue to fund the libraries instead of constantly favoring initiatives that only benefit tourists. Marissa Clover. Now that voters overwhelmingly voted down the disastrous and disingenuous millages put forth by the city, I hope you'll now understand that we will shoot down any inadequate proposition you think to fill its place. The library is staunch defenders and y'all should have listened to the public comments in August when we overwhelmingly said the exact same thing. It would have saved the city money <coughs> and maybe y'all wouldn't have lost as much trust from your voters. But here we are and you have an attempt to possibly gain back some good faith. Fund the libraries not a dime less than they currently are being funded. Give them more money. It's one of the only things our tax dollars go to that actually helps people, grows people. If you give us another bad proposition, we will shoot it down and get. Fund the libraries all the way. No half measures, no misinformation. People are watching this measure very carefully. And as you all recently learned, we'll come harder next time. Elaine Leda. I want to see our public libraries and their programs fully funded. Given the deeply disturbing misrepresentation and conflicting statements during the campaign for Prop 2, we need frankness and honesty. I am happy to support millage creases, but not at the expense of our libraries. Jack Reno Sweeney. It was truly a disappointment to see the library director holding water for a blatant attempt to defund the library and approve the use of New Orleans Public Library resources to mislead patrons ahead of the December 5th vote. The director's tenure thus far has been a disappointment generally, as he does not seem to understand the value of our libraries or how they work, given his previous comments indicating a desire to make libraries more like Uber and Lyft, among other bizarre statements. I do not know how any citizen can trust this man after he supported Prop 2 library cuts, despite knowing it would have a drastic effect, impact on library services, later lied about those impacts, and then admitted that the library actually had no plan to adjust the 40% cut Prop 2 would have imposed. If he had no plan then, I doubt he has a good one now. We will accept nothing less than a full, clean library millage renewal, and I hope the director is on the same page. Timothy Rupert. We, the citizens of New Orleans, spoke clearly when we approved a millage for our library so many years ago. We spoke clearly again when there was an attempt to divert the library millage to other uses. Please give us a clean renewal so that we can continue to fully fund our beloved libraries. Francis Gill. It is outrageous that the city tried to cut library funding by 40%. The voters spoke up and named that for what it was, an absolutely deceitful scam. Please correct this mistake and put a full renewal of library funding on the ballot ASAP. Rob Nelson. Fully fund the public library system with a dedicated millage at the expiring rate. Do not cut the library's funding. The voters demonstrated this a few weeks ago, as you all recall. Allison TV. I'm still trying to process the lies and manipulation deployed by the Yes on Two campaign, trying to defund a library for 20 years so you can have an unaccountable slush fund. Preying on the desperation of parents who see so few public educational opportunities for their children with 100 seats in an, uh, in an educational program. But do you know what educational public program serves every childhood in New Orleans? Our libraries. The No On Two campaign showed us how passionately people from toddlers to our elders feel about the library and library workers. It was an honor to hear so many New Orleanians share what NOPL has done for them. My own mother shared that as a poor kid growing up, the latter library was a second home for her where she walked after school most days. The people of New Orleans deserve a fully funded library and there should be a millage in 2021 to accomplish this. When our families have library access, their lives improve. It's that simple. Library workers do an amazing job helping and educating us and should never fear for their jobs for lack of funding. Fund NOPL, fund it fully and fund it permanently. <clears throat> Jane LeBlanc. I urge the city council, public library administration and library board to create a 
millage that supports and meets the needs of the community as well as library staff. It is your job to advocate for the public library and its place in our community. If you are unable to fulfill that position, you should consider stepping down. New Orleans has shown its championship for the library. Now it's your opportunity to reciprocate. Candace Cooper. The New Orleans Public Library offers so many free essential services that I have seen our citizens, thank you, citizens relying on. We are still in a pandemic and we will be recovering from the pandemic for years after. This is not the time to take funding away from our library and our free essential services, which will impact our communities already hit the hardest by COVID. Lee Abbott. I'm writing to urge you to place a renewal of the library's current millage on the ballot before the end of 2021, a dedicated millage free of ties to other unspecified initiatives or cor private corporate handouts. The people of NOLA made our voices heard in December by rejecting Prop 2. We said we want to continue to invest in our libraries and won't stand for any reductions in services or further furloughs. When the time comes to draft language for our library millage renewal, remember that New Orleans loves and protects its libraries. Thank you. Logan Fernberg, fund the library. Um, this comment does not have a name. I worked for the New Orleans Public Libraries from 2010 to 2018 and it saved my life. Working as a baker beforehand, I had no access to healthcare and faced a lot of risks in the service industry. Getting a job at the library helped me stabilize, then improved my life, and I became a contributing member of my neighborhood community. The library director, board, workers, and patrons fought for a millage increase to better serve our communities, and voters agreed that investments in the library are meaningful. The library is an in reliably rare opportunity for better to, for better serve our better civic engagement and must be protected. Pardon me, y'all. Please invest in personnel. Allow the libraries to be a good place to work, offer fair treatment and compensation to staff, and address the toxic environment that has been enforced from the administration. Please adapt to COVID-19 with one more technological advancements, more e-audiobooks, and updates to better than canopy streaming service. Number two, increase cleaning staff at branches so they can safely welcome the public. And three, innovative and safe engagement for our city's vulnerable. Check out Wi-Fi hotspots. Put up tents with books and technology outdoors so teens and children can have a safe place to spend time. Jay Austin Hartke, fund the libraries. We need them. Sarah Carminati. There is no more important institution in the city to me personally or to supporting New Orleans families and the people in need. The kind of help that librarians extend is incomparable. Please listen to the voters who overwhelmingly supported renewing this millage. Megan Snyder, the NOPL should be fully funded at existing levels. Libraries are essential to a strong city. Residents are willing to pay for this service. Libraries require dedicated funding that is unable to be rated or siphoned off for other projects such as early childhood ed and or other pet projects. Initiatives should be transparent and not contain falsehoods meant to mislead the public. No public funds should be used to promote nefarious agendas. Corey Linen. Library funding is critical to services that my family and I benefit from. This has been especially important during the pandemic as I've used the library to supplement my child's reading comprehension while not attending school. The schoolwork at home is not enough to keep her fully engaged while not attending school physically. The safe reopening the library during the pandemic has given our family a weekly event that we could rely on doing safely. The books my child has read were used to base reports on and entertain her. I am truly grateful for the staff at the New Orleans Public Library and recommend fully funding their operating budgets to ensure they are able to continue providing this critical service. We're almost done, y'all. Hope folks. First of all, I don't want to see the officials who promoted or supported Prop 2 presenting anything ever again. You have no credibility. I genuinely don't believe you're a bad person and you don't represent or care about the public good. Step off. Second, not only should the library's current level of funding be restored, but they should be given a 70% funding increase to pay the workers a fair wage and to provide even more free universal services to the citizens of New Orleans, as opposed to the trash neoliberal austerity plot to give a few zero to three-year-old children daycare 
which was really disguised through your greed and lush for a slush fund. I'm disappointed in Helena Moreno for introducing and supporting Prop 2. I hope you regret it. I'm disappointed in Jay Banks for claiming the library wouldn't be affected and no workers would be laid off. This was proven false. I hope you were misled and not in the plot to destroy the public library system. And I'm disappointed in Mayor Latoya Cantrell for so many reasons, but I think the lens and Bayou Brief thoroughly documented and covered that. Pardon my impending mispronunciation. Nadia Eskildsten, sorry. The lying and subterfuge used by the mayor and her cronies to attempt to pass this Trojan horse of a millage ostensibly for early education, but considerate only of well-off was shameful. I hope to see a future equitable library millage that provides the funds necessary for such integral public asset. Paul Tassin. We can't comment effectively if we all know the meeting is bare bones info in this agenda. Maybe us, many of us are deeply concerned about library funding, but without knowing more, we can't speak directly to the issues on point in this meeting. All I can do with such vague notice is refer to reporting on this issue by the lens from the past several months. And our last one, Renard Bridgewater. With a new library millage being voted on next year, which I look forward to participating in at the appropriate time, not at the expense of early childhood education as it was presented by out-of-state PACs, our current mayoral administration and Gabriel Morley. I'm confused as to why this meeting is taking place in addition to how info was disseminated about it. Why wasn't this info sent to library card holders like myself? Much like the November 17th email was, which attempted to misinform New Orleans with statements that said, if Prop 2 failed, NOPL would quote, face a 50% funding cut in the possibility of reduced locations, operating hours, and significantly decreased collections programs and technology budgets, close quote. And that are the public comments. Thank y'all. Thank you, Sadie. Nice job there, drink some water. <laughs> All right. So uh, as mentioned before, um, I'm certainly, you know, ready to move forward with the renewal um, of the full millage for the libraries. Um, obviously, a next step, though, is, of course, getting that strategic plan completed with much public dialogue. Um, I think it's really important, you know, that moving forward with this, that the taxpayers are incredibly aware as to how their money is going to be spent and that they are well informed moving into the ballot initiative that'll come up in the fall. Um, any other comments from any of the panelists or council members? Please speak up because I might not be able to see you on the screen. Any other comments? Uh, Madam President, I just wanted to reiterate that I am uh, in council with you. I'm ready to move forward to do what we need to do to help our libraries, but I also do not want anybody to have any delusions that that it should be at the forsake of some other pressing needs. I think that we have to be intentional on addressing all of the issues that face our community. The libraries are definitely important, but so is affordable housing, so is early childhood. The things that we have to be faced as a government entity can't be dictated by, 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 by a poll. We have responsibilities that we have to adhere to, and we've got responsibilities that we have to address. And again, to, to Fela and to Gabe and to all the library advocates, I look forward to working with you all to come up with an amicable solution that can make these limited dollars we have stretch as far as we can address all the needs that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Banks. Uh, anybody else? Council yeah, Member I Paul. do. I, I just want to say I might disagree a little bit with Councilmember Banks on this one. Um, when we talk about millages, we've often said for many years that millages are a reflection of our value system and where we want to place our money. I actually think that the public spoke very loudly on where they want their tax dollars to go. And that's why we're here. I, I really wish we had a little bit more time for this meeting because I know we were just, I was just notified of this meeting yesterday or this morning. Um, I would rather have a deeper public conversation, quite frankly, and with the, with the public on it. I'm, I'm pleased that y'all are going in that direction, but I want to be very clear. I think the public spoke loudly and clearly that they, their value system is to have a, a highly functioning library system. And, um, and I'm committed to that. And um, I'm just glad that everyone yeah. will come to the table. And I want to make sure that this millage is robust and reflects what the desire is of the city. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Councilmember Palmer, to your point um, on, um, you know, 
having this meeting be a little longer. First, we can go as long as you want um, today. So let's let, let's be clear on that. But we also, um, of course, we'll have- No, 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 no. I'm talking about longer. We would just receive notification yesterday of this meeting. Yeah. I'm saying it would have been nice to have a, a longer, you know, from a notification process for the public and not having it the week of Christmas. That, that's all I'm saying. Once we saw the deadlines we were up against to try to get it on the October ballot with February being the notice of intent, we opted on the side of, of starting the process now. And obviously we'll have additional meetings um, throughout this process, but we wanted to go ahead and start moving on this quickly and not waiting until next year until, you know, the January 22nd meeting or whatever of the next ad valorem committee, because this is where the millages have been discussed in the past. Obviously we could have put them through another committee as well, but I just didn't want to wait until uh, next year to get the ball rolling on this um, based on the fact that the voters spoke very loudly about how they feel about this particular matter. Um, yeah, no, I agree, which is why, you know, I went through a process and got it on the ballot for the French Quarter initiative at the last council meeting. I'm just saying, I, you know, it'd be great if we just kind of all moved together in unison with a little bit more time with that for everybody. Well, the good thing is we've got plenty more meetings to, to come and, and now we've got the ball rolling. So I forgot to do one thing, council members. Uh, I forgot to do approval of the, of the minutes from our last meeting. So if I can get, I'll, I'll do a motion to approve the minutes. Can I get a second on that? Second. I think that was council member Banks. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Council member Banks, council member Palmer, do you approve the minutes? Is I think council member Wynn, are you still on? I need one more. She may be gone. I'm I. I think council member Wynn might be gone. I need one more. Show still on. All right, well, I have three, so I can't approve the minutes again. <laughs> we'll have to do them next time. Well, thank you all to all the panelists so much for joining us. This is just the beginning of, of course, much more uh, to come. And, you know, feel free to keep us posted on, on any additional uh, information. Ms. Rice. Yes. First of all, thank you all for this meeting. Um, I would just like to say that I appreciate you all taking the time to engage us and talk to us about this. It's important that we together get a plan that's going to benefit our citizens. But I also wanna say that I believe in the capabilities of our new executive director, Dr. Marley, and the plan that he plans on implementing. And I want him to know that I fully support him. Thank you, Ms. Rice. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, um, we can't really vote on a motion to adjourn, but I will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thank you all so much for joining us. Let's stay in touch and we've got some work to do. Thank you. <laughs>